it certainly helps to hear what we did with the dollars that the taxpayers raised for us. Let's talk about how, not, how many dollars that, that, that added up to and what, what, we, what we had when the dust settled. I'll take you, I guess, maybe to the detail page on page 9, and we can walk through um, some of the highlights there, and then I'll bring you back to the slides, if you will. The, uh, the punchline is that the operating budget itself carried a surplus at the end of the day of $223,000. Uh, we made a transfer of $17,500 out of that uh, to bring the food service program to, to solvency, uh, as is the statutory responsibility when it can't do so for itself. And, uh, and so that left us with a fund balance of about $205,000. That's not all that's coming back. There's more coming back, to, but that's the general fund operating surplus, if you will. Um, the budget summary is here for you. I would walk you down through a couple of the high points, and I'm focused in this case on, on the far right column of variance, the balance remaining, where you see categorically the, the pluses and the minuses. I tell you that in the area of regular education, we had a kindergarten classroom that we didn't fill, we didn't use. So there was a teaching position we didn't fill, and there was a teacher aid position in that classroom, the kindergarten classroom, we didn't fill. The two of those add up to the biggest chunk of the, of the savings there in regular ed. Beyond that, though, there were other savings in higher. So you have somebody who retires from you or, or leaves to move to another district and leaves at a, a high step on the scale, costing $60,000, $70,000, whatever it is, and they're replaced by somebody who has maybe less experience, less academic achievement in terms of degrees earned, and uh, still qualified, certified, highly qualified teacher, uh, but you have savings there, and that's where you see savings on the hiring process. Remember that we've still got a veteran staff, better than two-thirds of our staff have, are at the top of the scale, the majority of those have been here 20 plus years, so bringing in somebody that's maybe newer to the profession uh, isn't such a risk when you've got folks that you can surround them with that have got such great skills to share in mentoring and such. In the area of special education, the next line down, you see significant overage. Uh, we, we can boast that we've had no students in out-of-district placements. So understand that the neediest students with some of the most severe challenges uh, uh, and, and educational disabilities end up in many places and in many districts and have here in the past as well ended up in out of district placements that can be regionally and or, or further and those can add up significantly in terms of placement costs transportation costs some of the consulting services that have to be um, secured when they are away from us and obviously we as part of the standing law we do everything we can and must to place children in the in the, in the uh, wow Free least and least restrictive least. environment. I'm sorry, the <laughs> phrase is escaping me. In the least restrictive environment, which really would be in the in the best case, right here in the home district in hometown, we can say that we've done that really well. But in bringing in all of those students and managing to run them in programs here, we had to secure some additional consulting services, some additional specialist services like uh, services for the blind and the and the hearing impaired, uh, uh, occupational therapy, physical therapy, things of that beyond what we had on staff, and so we see those those overages there. But uh, but that really was that those costs secured us this least restrictive environment and keeping all of our students here in our buildings and our programs. Uh, another big variance uh, that pops out. Uh, I'm going to go to negative variances maybe because that shows something meaningful maybe more meaningful than the positive variances. In buildings, all the way down to 2620 buildings, you see a variance there of about 40,000, 47,000. We did some end of year, made some end of year decisions with the board support and did uh, security or safety upgrades to our bleachers at both the Marson School Gymnasium and in the Eastman Gym at the Academy. Railings, treads, some of the underpinnings, uh, not structurally it's going to fall down, but just uh, lawsuits around the country for the last couple of years say that you really should do it like this now, etc. So we did that. We upgraded our intercoms because we had, through the budget, uh, put new phone systems in now at all three of our schools, tying them all together so that we don't dial an outside number only to dial into the principal who's down the hall or just across the street. Uh, I mean, the old Centrix systems we've had around since, what, the 70s, maybe before, where you could dial direct with a small digit. Now our buildings are actually connected. What we look forward to now is partnering with the rest of the town when we can get there, maybe in a, in a, in a, a solution like a fiber net or something where we can connect uh, m multiple districts, schools, not multiple districts, multiple facilities. Schools moving forward because we need to share data and voice 
back and forth that way, it'll make a, a lot of sense, I think, to make that uh, community-wide endeavor when we can get there. But um, we had to upgrade our intercoms because the upgrades to our phones inadvertently left us without an interface. Right now, what can happen or what does happen is at any point in the building, if you were to pick up on the intercom system in a classroom, you can hit an outside phone line. Likewise, we had to interface it so that at any phone you picked up, you can do an all call across the building's intercom to say, we have an issue, everybody get out, what have you. Uh, and so we, we invested in that. And then some of that overage is also about the gas line that we ended up putting in from Hobbs Road at the Marston School out back to where we planted the generator that we had secured over the course of two years with the long-term maintenance warrant article. Uh, ultimately, uh, we had intended to, to tap into the service that came down from uh, High Street to Marston but uh, the costs were, they were they, it was cheaper for us to put in a new service line straight out to Hobbs yeah. than to try to upgrade the pipes that ran all the way over the building. So you see those overages there. The last one is the 13, almost $14,000 in transportation, which uh, is not a regular transportation or a special needs. That's really cost related to McKinney Bento homeless uh, transportation. We've maybe talked about this with the budget committee. We certainly have had a couple of presentations of the board understand that there is a federal law that's called the McKinney-Vento Act that supports the right of students, should they become homeless, uh, to continue to go to school where they originally were at school. Uh, and so a family somewhere in the seacoast who becomes homeless and maybe takes advantage, and now you understand the impact on Hampton, take advantage of a winter rental that is yeah. seasonal and, and, trans and uh, transitional, tra and, and, and find that housing, they're still in, entitled to continue to go to school wherever they started, which might have been Exeter or Epping or Portsmouth, you name it. We share the cost of transporting those students under law with the district they're going back to. But those numbers have been significant for us over the last couple of years. And our budgets are chasing the actuals to try to catch up, but that's where you see the variance. That's a quick uh, quick summary of, uh, of the operating budget. Uh, you look at the, the appropriations at the bottom I mentioned the, the surplus was 223. We transferred to food service. You see just under $30,000 as a surplus from the center school project. When I was with you last fall and we talked, we had already opened for school, so the project was essentially over. This is the fiscal year in which the finances all get uh, captured, even though we broke ground in April of 13. And uh, remember, uh, we went to the ballot, uh, we went to the public hearing with a number that had been offered up to us by the architects of $859,000, which the superintendent and I and Mr. Lassard all felt was was really a number out of the sky. But we went ahead with the board support and we commissioned the, uh, the, the buildable and biddable documents, took it out to bid, received the bid results on the afternoon of the deliberative session, and were able to have the board make a motion to amend that article the night of the deliberative from 859 down to 5886, which was the contract that we signed off on. Uh, we were able to deliver on that $30,000 lighter than that, which was contingency. The project, in it, it, we carried some contingency because we weren't sure what was underground right. where we were going to put in that addition. Uh, but we managed to, uh, I, I know Mr. Gopalan is uh, no longer on the board and no longer in Hampton, but as a, as a shout out to, to Art for all of his support and, uh, and his concern, he was, I know, pleased that this stayed under budget, but it stayed on scope. And there wasn't any scope creep. Uh, and obviously we delivered because we opened the doors for the kids that, that, that fall. Great. So that yeah. adds another 30000 to the bottom line. So the, the, the spending side, the appropriation side, carries about $235,000 um, of, uh, of fund balance for you. And if you flip the page to page 10, we can talk about the revenue side. And I've, I've offered some notes to try to draw your attention to things that are most, most Exciting. There's extra here, extra here, extra here, and extra <laughs> here. The single biggest is that we we are we benefit from Medicaid to Schools program and reimbursement from Medicaid for the services and equipment and uh, provided to some number of our students. Uh, every year we have to be very careful because some of our students are eligible, some are not. The, that eligibility can change, and the way that we fund some of their needs under federal grants, other federal funding, can. Uh, can get in the way of eligibility under Medicare, so we're very Medicaid, excuse me. So we're very careful. In this case, I anticipated forty-five thousand. You can see that we actually carried a revenue, uh, a reimbursement there of over ninety-three thousand dollars. That's the biggest contributor to what was ultimately a sixty-one thousand dollar variance in revenues. 
And if you carry all the way down through numbers that are intended to confuse and obfuscate, you can find your way to the bottom and see that uh, the total fund balance uh, that will be stated for tax rate benefit uh, credit to the new tax bill is $296,767. Let me take you back to the slides. This would be a great opportunity for me to just say, over the last three years, the superintendent and I have sat in front of the camera several times. We come and do it here. Normally on a monthly meetings, we're sitting up there, and we're a little bit separated, so we're not boxed in quite the way that the camera boxes us in right now. But each year at budget time, we do the little videos uh, promoting the budget, talking about what's on the warrant for the schools, et cetera. And I just took a peek earlier tonight, and I'm, I'm always impressed every time I look that I look like I'm about to walk on for the New York Giants or something. And, and she looks like she's about ready to enter preschool when I look at them. You don't see it on the camera right now, but every time I turn around and look, I, if, if there's no other motivation to go to the gym, it's sitting here and watching myself on that camera, <laughs> on that screen. I, uh, take, I'm sorry, I digress. Take you back to the slides and tell you that the, the operating savings, I said uh, 205000 from the operating and center schools, 29.9, and the revenues gets us that fund balance. I wanted you to know that federal funds, for us, are the titled grants, our IDEA, which supports special needs programming. Uh, the superintendent has mentioned some of those already, some of the new grants that we received. We actually secured $584,000 worth of federal funding. It's still very small compared to the $19 million budget and, and the almost non-existent state support that you get for education in Hampton. But those are dollars that, that help some of the neediest among our students, some of the uh, some of the most educationally challenged students uh, and really make a great difference in the, in the programming that the school is able to provide. Uh, it's also important to mention to you the Food Service Fund, although it's not intended to be taxpayer funded. Uh, it had revenues of 442000 before its transfer, expenses of 467 so it continues to run in the deficit. We have made some significant changes in staffing to try to reduce labor costs uh, starting for this school year, September 1. Uh, we have uh, eliminated middle management, so we saw the departure of some of our veteran folks who were site managers leading the kitchens in each of the satellite buildings. Our food service director, Mary Borg, is doing her best to be the site leader at all three buildings. Uh, those folks carried the highest rates with some sur not surcharges, but uh, some, some upcharges in their hourly rate because of the leadership roles that they served or provided. So we made some cuts there. We got skinny in lots of ways in our staffing. Uh, we're doing a lot of multifunction, a lot of... Um, uh, crossover training so that uh, fewer people can continue to do all of the different jobs. Uh, very little specialization going on now. Uh, as long as the dishwashers keep washing their hands before they hit the cash register or the serving line, <laughs> then you know we're doing exactly what we should be doing. And we're really hopeful that we're going to continue to tighten that gap. Uh, there was a 10 cent increase in the price tag on our lunch. Went from $2.50 to two sixty. dollars uh, that will generate a little bit of revenue. It wasn't really meant to be a balancing uh, that chases f uh, federal mandates and the requirement to continue to keep up with what Uncle Sam is reimbursing for a free meal, for instance, which is greater than the amount that we're charging locally. So there's a statute uh, in place uh, at the federal level that suggests we have to recalculate and, and, and work to keep up uh, to be fair, uh, in this case, to the federal subsidy program that supports the food lunch, the hot lunch program. Uh, and then the last uh, piece that's there is uh, just an update on the Special Education Trust Fund. That's the only trust fund that the school district in Hampton carries. It is held by the trustees of trust funds in the town of Hampton. Uh, and the balance at June 30th looked like 213000 and a little bit. Um, we have, you funded that initially with 50, with 75000 two more times, and there have been uh, earnings over those, over those last three or four years uh, that adds up to that total as it stands right now. It, in the slides, here's just another graphic. I won't walk through it, but everything that I just got done saying essentially is captured there as well as in the detail sheets so that you'd have that uh, to understand the fiscal picture of what we did with the tax dollar last year in fiscal year 13-14. Having talked to you about <coughs> what our goals were and what we did to meet that uh, those goals and the dollars that we spent in so doing, we, we wanted to just give you a quick update on 
1415, the goals moving forward and the budget. Do you want to speak I to think it? that you'll notice that the first um, five goals are very similar to what we have. Um, we're talking about curriculum instruction, we're talking about human capital, communication, governance, finances and facilities updating. But this year the board has determined to add one more and that the board um, is taking this year uh, to look at Hampton Academy. Uh, they have uh, in the pa in a year ago voted, um, um, the board voted uh, four to one uh, to move forward with with uh, addressing the needs at Hampton Academy and that would be done through a renovation of the current facility uh, that they would stay in town although they have a piece of property as many of you know out on Tom Fa Town Farm Road Toll Farm, uh, toll farm, toll farm um, that they would stay at the current site uh, that because it's so much a part of the fabric of the community um, and the two elementary schools on both sides of that middle school, the ability for kids to walk uh, in the downtown and, and, and making sure that the downtown is vibrant, a vibrant part of your community, they elected to stay. Um, so we will begin that process of looking at the facility. We've already done the studies. Honest, they don't want to spend any more on studies. They have done studies for studies. And I recommended that they just move forward and we will be, they, they are, they're, they're moving forward with that. They have a work session coming up. They'll be looking at it again because it is on the CIP. And uh, they will be moving forward to uh, begin the process of exactly what that, those renovations should look like. They've already determined most of the needs in that building. There's no question we've done the tours, we've, we've talked to the community, and now it's a matter of de determining what that building should look like 50 years from now. You don't want to do this again. So you, whatever the decisions that are made will really set the stage for the future. So that will be a major initiative this year at, at the school board level. So the operating budget of 1415 started for us July 1st. It was voted in March of 14. Yeah. The operating budget now includes the teacher warrant article that was a two-year deal, a two-year contract that was approved. Operating budget is 19 million six. We again had the $300,000 annual long-term maintenance. Uh, the child benefit services warrant article for Sacred Heart School passed at 42,005, which is roughly $1,000 per student there. So the total operating uh, uh, appropriations for 1415, 19.9, just under 20 million dollars. Uh, I want to bridge that then and talk briefly about 1516. We'll be back. I think we have a date of December 16th. I know today's the 16th, so it might be December 16th. Uh, but we'll be back in December to present to you the operating budget uh, the, uh, as proposed for 1516. You will, as in years past, receive the book. And that book will come in advance of Thanksgiving to give you the three weeks plus or whatever it is to review and prepare. Uh, we, uh, we've set dates to present to the board starting uh, right around the end of October, 1st of November. So they'll have time to review that uh, and pass it forward. We'll go back to the same process that we've done in the past. We, we try very hard to make a clean uh, zero-based budgeting effort where we go back and look line by line. The superintendent and I together, sitting with administrators and the, and the department heads, go through the, pro the budget. Hey, some lines look like last year because they continue to be based upon the same parameters and the same assumptions that are made about what we need, where we're not specifically buying three of these and five of these, but we really try to revisit every one of those. Uh, we compare ourselves to the goals and the objectives that you've seen that we work with uh, the administrators on and share with the board each year mm -hmm. to try to let that drive us. Uh, you want to, I don't I, I could just say, um, couple of things that uh, get ready to pass it because I'm not sure who wants to speak but two things that we've already identified that I think are going to be important in our budgeting initiative is to talk about securing some human resource assistance in the uh, in the business office we've worked really hard uh, to make sure that the SAU your withdrawal initiative to leave SAU 21 and secure your own superintendent and business administrator your own superintendent's office uh, to become SAU 90 was I'm sure for many a uh, concern and for many, it boiled down to how can the efficiencies that are derived from a centralization at 21 be anything but, uh, if you shift away from that, how can it be anything but an increase in cost? And so you have to know we carry that as a, as a, well, as a burden, if you want to call it that. As a, uh, I can tell you that the last year that you paid into SU 21 was 10-11, and you paid 432000 and I've now forgotten the, 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 the next three numbers, but it's, it was 432 and change. 
Uh, this year, even with the benefits in 14, 15, we won't spend that much, that much, and that was the 10, 11 number. And so you can take your own percent and a half, two, three, four percent, whatever metric, and consider where that number would be four years later. Uh, but we've done that because we, we try to keep it skinny, because we work really hard to, to share the duties. And what has happened and continues to happen is that for good and sufficient reason, local government center takes more money than they need, and then they give it back to us. But somebody's got to do all of the analysis and the spreadsheet work and then all the data entry to make that turn into checks for retirees and actives because we have to give it all back. Uh, Obamacare suggests now that I've got to keep track of, we have to keep track of everybody's time. Even if I know that you're working 40 hours a week or I know you're working 30 hours a week, it's not enough. We've got to collect and manage the data because we've got reporting requirements so that we can prove who should and should not have access to the insurance, have access to the marketplace, for whom we might see a penalty come back when the fines are finally imposed under that, under that uh, enabling law legislation. Uh, it's important to us, it's important to federal and state authorities that we routinely notify folks with universal this and universal that and opportunity this. And by the time you get done and then you add in things like we worked really hard at wellness, trying to bring our health insurance rates down, which by the way fell by three and a half percent this year. Uh, in large part, I think, because we work so hard with our wellness committee, with, with pushing teachers and staff to be well. I, I'm not the poster child for that initiative, but we're trying. <laughs> um, but, you know, pu pushing it and, it, and it made a difference. But what that takes is it takes somebody who sits and plays the social media game internally, who sends out emails and plays cheerleader and rabble rouses and, and connects and, and plays, uh, um, and plays a um, referral person, you know, I want a case manager for everybody in terms of connecting them to the things that might best ser serve them. That, that's adding up to more hours than we can handle with the staff that we've got. There's so many new rules and expectations and accountabilities that are laid on. So something part-time to assist in that regard. And enrichment is an is a important element throughout the district. Uh, it's something that there's not, uh, there's not a wealth of opportunity for as our budget stands and as our programming uh, is today. And we want to explore that and find opportunities to add to the educational experience of all of our students. The drivers that are going to drive our budget as we come back to you, 15, 16, we just passed a teacher uh, agreement, so there's contracted uh, dollars there. We will be coming to you, I hope, with a newly negotiated agreement with our paraprofessionals union, SESPA, the Seacoast Educational Support Professionals Association. And so that'll be in a separate Warren article, but all other contracted wages will be there. If you haven't yet heard from the town side, you will about police and fire on the teacher side and the employee side, the New Hampshire Retirement dealt us a 6.6% increase to teacher contributions and a 3.7% to uh, employee contributions that we'll make to the New Hampshire Retirement System. I, I can tell you out of the box, that's at least $130,000 as I ran the numbers on today's salaries for today's staff. So as we look to 15, 16, it's going to be at least 130 of new money that we chase there before we see contracted increases. Beyond that, you know, the superintendent already made a, su a suggestion that enrollment has taken a dip. We continue to monitor. She mentioned that in this budget, center school went from eight classrooms to seven at every grade level. K1 and 2, so there were three teaching positions uh, that, we, that we eliminated as we budgeted. Those are hard decisions to make. We do everything we can to see those happen by attrition so that folks that are retiring aren't replaced as opposed to staff that are interested in gainful employment uh, having, to, having to move on. We've been really successful at keeping everybody in-house who's here. So, but we have to continue to look and be aware of what our enrollment does. We'll use NESDEC, the, uh, the educational group out of uh, blah, 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 Mass. I forget where it is. Um, Northern Mass, just across the border, Lexington maybe. But anyway, they do, they do enrollment projections for us as a part of our membership with them every year. Uh, and so we'll have that as a part of our budgeting package. And, and, and we have to keep paying attention because a lot of the services that we talked about that come to us by Title I and II and IDEA standards are really important to our students. And as those entitlements are at risk each year, we try to monitor the impacts that that might have. So that's our plan for 15-16. And we'll be back in December with that. The superintendent would, would say it if I gave her 30 more seconds to talk, but <laughs> don't ever hesitate to be, to be among us. You know, we, our office is in, the, the old th in one of the wings of Marston, the one closest to the parking lot. Uh, you can park near it uh, and, uh, if you're lucky. And, um, <laughs> and knock on the door and come on and see us. Because if you have questions, the easiest way is to sit down face-to-face -face and make sure that some of the stuff that we try to make, I try to make as simple as I can, 
for you know for generic consumption on the camera, et cetera. Certainly could do, could use some more discussion at times. Don't hesitate to come ask for that.